हेलो सलाम शलोम नमस्ते सताल अलोहा ओला चाओ पांच बोला प्रिवियत एंड मैं है इट्स सो गुड टू बी विथ यू अगैन and you will be so happy you are joining us today because we have a really wonderful fabulous guest with us it's Bri Reese who is a manifestation life coach that is so cool and i'm so happy you're with us Bri welcome hello thank you so much samya no for way. having me on today And yes, I was so grateful when you reached out to me cuz this is one of the biggest topics that I love to talk about and help others with is manifesting. So, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. Yes. And be please tell us more about who you are and what you do as a manifestation life coach. Oh, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Well, so Um I live here in Colorado with my family. I actually have adult kids now. Um one who's uh, the baby is 16. She's actually um my stepdaughter. I call her my bonus daughter, but I have two bonus daughters and then I actually was a single mom at the age of 20. So my daughter just in a few days will be turning 21 years old. So um they she's been out of the house for a couple of years now and um you know i really truly feel like i'm living my dream life like i have manifested everything that has been going on in my life um i've been actively manifesting for 20 years having that first taste of manifesting when i actually had my daughter and so you know rewind 21 years ago um I was terrified just like everybody else to have a baby, give birth, right? And um the only thing though I knew I had power in was the power of prayer. I grew up in the faith. I'm so grateful for my parents for for really cultivating that for me and my brother. Uh but I would find myself laying in the bathtub, rubbing my belly and just praying to God to give me a really quick labor. I knew it was going to be painful, you know, um there wasn't anything I could do about that, right? But I really just asked and I I even shout out some numbers. I was like 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours. I'm good with those amounts of time. Like God, please just just deliver that for me and lo and behold he did and so um it was really cool she was actually born on time too on her due date at exactly noon and the labor was only 3 hours long and so i knew the power then i also you know if i rewind just only like 4 years prior i would walk in the door at curfew at 16 years old at exactly my curfew. My dad actually would say stuff like how do you do it you're always on time. And I actually said to myself, I am always on time. You know, I didn't want to get like my car taken away like who, you know, I didn't want to break curfew. And so I really had this belief system that I was on time. And so it was just so fascinating that I really had her on time too. So it really gave me a taste of like the power of belief, the power of prayer, the power of manifesting. We can actually whatever we believe, we can conceive, you know, have come to fruition for us. So that's really where it all started for me. And um gosh, the past 20 years have been a roller coaster, right? Um being a single mom for 10 years, I I did get married in that time but but divorced as well. I really like found myself on the highs of life and the lows of life. Um but that is what I always tell everyone, my clients, everything that this is the process, right? We are not everything happened like everything happens for a reason. Everything happens mm-hmm. um maybe not in the way that you want it to happen, but it what it teaches us is what we do and we don't want. So it's just like the natural part of life and I'm here to share with everybody that even if you are feeling like you are in the lowest of the lows right now there is hope for you. You know, um so yeah, that's basically where 
I started, I then um, came across, uh, well, vision boarding, right, is totally my thing. Um, If you're not familiar with what a vision board is, it's uh, basically a visual representation of everything that you want, right? And you can cut this stuff out of magazines and slap it on a poster board. You can also Google images. Um, I highly recommend getting specific, um, but not too specific because really the power is time is on our side when it comes to manifesting. We don't actually don't know when it's going to be happening and that is not our job or the how, right? That's not our job. It's really just the what is our job and just being in the process of growing and and enjoying. So um, yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> I can keep going, but you know, you can let me know, like specifically what what I you yeah <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you so much, V. I I mean, just there, you shared so much that we can dig into, and I love that you brought up the vision boards that you are so good at, and uh, they, because that's a very specific tool that our audience can use for themselves also uh, and so I would love to dig deeper into that with you but tell me more uh, you just said something really fascinating um, that people who are not familiar with manifesting or not familiar with vision boards uh, I don't know if they would understand or appreciate this point uh, you just said something along the lines of uh, you want to get specific but not too specific uh, because it's not for us to um, sort of, you know, be controlling the time and the how, but rather it is for us to focus on the what. So so can you uh, tell me more about that because, um, you know, I would say that in the broader culture of, you know, how you make life happen for you, the the lesson that you are taught, the uh, the dominant mindset is, okay, you know what, you have to work hard for whatever you want. And yeah. so you have to first be like, okay, this is what I want. And then you have to create a plan and set uh, specific action steps and, uh, you know, things like that for how you're going to get there and then start working on those steps. And, you know, you have to actively work to get there. But are you saying something different or did I misunderstand you? Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hope you're getting value out of it. For your information, this episode has been sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Are you a change maker, coach, trainer, or healer? Are chains of fear holding you back from making the impact and income you desire? Using a unique combination of positive psychology and the spiritual wisdom of our most effective change makers, the Happiness 101 program helps you break through your limiting beliefs and manifest the abundance and success you desire with fun and ease. Interested? Book a free Happiness 101 exploration call with me, your happiness expert, Samia Vano. Just use my online calendar link in the show notes. Now back to the show. Yeah, I'm I'm saying that, um, well, just based on my, on what I, so taking action is paramount, right? Mm. First and foremost, we are absolutely, we can't just do wishful thinking and then sit on their, on the couch and do nothing. We've got to act on with our intuition, with that, with our higher power that is really calling us to move. Mm. And, and I look at like just creating a vision board is action. It's like the first step you're getting clear on what you want. And I believe that the universe, God, source, 
whatever you believe, um, this is just my belief that they have our back. Like they want us to have it all, have what our heart desires. A lot of people, what I have realized being a manifestation coach is they don't know what they want. They've settled in areas. They don't believe they're worth it. So we really dive in first and foremost, really loving and accepting where they are how they got there, who they are, learning about like knowing thyself is very key um, because then you know what you want. And it's not, you know, what your parents' idea was for you. It's what you want, right? And energy is everything. So getting in alignment with that of um, feeling good. And I always tell my my clients too, when you, if you look at your board and you don't like a picture, take it off of the board because feeling is the secret. You really want to love it. Um, And Mm -hmm. so when I said like giving it a time frame, a lot of people like, you know, the first of the year, they're like, okay, I'm going to make a vision board of everything that I want this year. And then Mm -hmm. December rolls around and they're like, oh, that didn't come true. Like, well, guess what? It could come true in like 20 days from now. But if you, if depending on, you know, (laughs) the source universe at like what it is. So like not giving, not being so rigid in a time frame with it, but still moving and acting for it. I find this is just my belief. My manifestations are coming true faster now than ever before, but that's just where I'm at. Right. Again, we all are manifesting, even if it's the good, the bad and the ugly, right. Like I manifested my daughter, I manifested being a single mom. And if at at that time, you know, if I really, I mean, I didn't know it at the time, but that was my life path. And to get to where I am now, right. With my husband, Mm -hmm. he has two daughters with two separate women. When we all got together as a family, these women were single moms. And so I was prepared to handle their side and their point of view. Do you see what I'm saying? So everything always is always working out for us, whether we feel like it's not at the time and we feel like the sky is falling. Oh my gosh, I've been there many times in my life. But then I look back and, you know, it's not like everything goes my way, but it, I really can find the lessons in it and, and shift and move to then act and create what I do want. Um, You know, I do teach doing vision boards because of what happened to me in 2016. I was already married to my husband. My husband and I got married in 2012. Um, So we've been together now for 11, 12 years. And um, back in 2016, I had somebody come true, a famous person come true for my board that was on my board for eight years. So when that happened, I mean, this guy literally lives in Los Angeles. I live in Colorado and I didn't even realize it was happening until like two hours before I met him. I even was face to face with him. My daughter, I'm a dance mom. Um, My daughter loves to hip hop dance and he is a good hip hop dancer teacher. So she actually was able to dance with him for three hours. I couldn't have like what I thought I was just going to run into this famous guy, maybe in passing in an air, airport or something, because I've seen a lot of famous people in airports. If we think we might know like when it was going to happen, I never once said that will never happen. So just yeah. get like, let's get clear on that. I never said that would never happen. I thought I still had hope one day I would see him. I didn't know when it was eight years later. And, you know, I was happily married. Like I thought, <laughs> At one point, I was like, oh, my God, it'd be so cool to marry this famous guy, right? (laughs) So I'm just saying that, like, everything always works out in the divine timing. And we are not in control of the timing. Um, After that day in 2016, my mind was so blown, expanded. I would just, I felt like I was God's favorite. I mean, I I was just like in awe that this all happened like this yeah. and it, it stirred in, like, I really felt this is my yeah. calling. This is what I'm supposed to be doing is teaching vision boards because I've been doing it for so long. I actually was doing vision boards without even knowing I was doing vi- vision boards, <laughs> vision boarding when I was feng shuiing my room when I was 16 years old and I learned about the art of feng shui, you know, like 
I had a corner. I had a a money corner in my room. And, you know, um, I love interior design. I just feel like it's really important to have our surroundings, our environment be clear of clutter and pretty. It just makes us feel good. Right. And it is kind of like a vision board. So um, I've been doing this for a long time, but it was just in that moment. And so in tw- at the beginning of 2017, I s- launched my vision board workshop business and um, I, I put on them in person here in Colorado Springs and I am doing a lot online too. So um, yeah, that is like basically where it all started. And, and yeah, I hope that answers your question on the timing um, of it all is going to be always perfect for you. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, that's a very, very important point that you raise. Um, I, I think it's for a lot of us, um, you know, again, part of how the dominant culture trains us that, uh, you know, you need to be in control of everything. Uh, and, and, to be honest, you know, there's a lot of things in our life that if you try to control those things, you're really fighting a hard battle and, and even a losing battle because those things are fundamentally not in your control. And yeah. I think when things happen in terms of time, it's one of those things where you can try to influence uh, the outcomes that you desire and try to influence them happening in a certain timeline and things like that. But there's so many um, external factors that impact any outcome occurring that you, we, we truly cannot be in control. And especially when you're thinking about like big dreams that you have and manifesting big dreams that you have, um, it, it I think it just creates a lot of unnecessary stress on us mm-hmm. to enforce some kind of rigid timeline on on it. And sometimes, you know, I remember one of my um, mentors sharing this story of when she was working with her mentor, and she laid out this grand uh, vision and dream that she had for building this uh, center. Uh, that would, you know, uh, where she, through which, you know, she would live out her vision of the work that she wants to do of creating transformation and empowerment uh, for people. And then she, at some point she, she said, and um, I'm going to make this happen in 10 years. Mm-hmm. And my mentor's mentor paused her right there And he was like, and why are you putting this timeline on this dream? What if it could happen even sooner? You know, why are you saying 10 years? Uh, And so she was like, oh, because, you know, I I look based on my finances and based on, you know, the plan that I've made and, you know, I've consulted with my uh, tax people and my accountants and my architect and this person and that person who has done similar things. And based on all of the information that I've gathered, it seems like 10 years is, you know, the, the realistic yeah timeline and he was like no no this is um you know if you are stepping into this world of manifesting into um you know you want to cultivate your own spiritual powers in this context and grow in them then you have to just just stop with that um uh, you know and um You just start doing the best you can with what you have moving forward in the direction of living your dream and let it happen in whatever timeline it happens. And she says, you know, fast forward several years later, uh, her dream actually came to true and way faster than the 10 years that she had been planning on. So sometimes we can actually, it's not just, oh, it might happen 
it might take longer than 10 years. Sometimes we unnecessarily might put a constraint the other way also where it could actually happen even faster than we imagined. Yeah. But we are we are then blocking it from happening because we have this notion of time that we have imposed. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I've actually found that my manifestations some have happened while they're happening, I don't even realize that they were on my vision board. Um, they always seem to happen when I least expect it. Um, let me give you an example. Uh, I so I've been married twice. Um, so divorced after my divorce, I really surrendered into the fact that I was fine being single the rest of my life. Ooh. Yeah. And um, I actually went, I deep dived into more personal growth work. I found my myself at a week long seminar that uh, I partnered up with a gal who gave me a, a challenge. It was a challenge. Thinking, <laughs> She said, why don't you make a list of what you want in a mate, in a soulmate, in a partner? And I even told her, I said, why? I don't, I don't want a partner anymore. I don't want to go through any of that. Like she said, just write down the list. And I'm like, okay. So I really did. I got clear on the list. Um, you know, now that I, I was married, I learned lessons at what I wanted, what I didn't want. Right. And divorced. Right. So I, and it was a really quick marriage. It was like a, a year and a half, two years long marriage. Um, so I just wrote, I just let it rip, right? And this is what I do tell my uh, my students: just go with like first best or first answer, best answer. Just write it down. And so I ended up with a list of sixty five things, and that was April of twenty eleven. Um, in September of twenty eleven, so only five months later, my now husband came into my life. And I was so nervous to share the list with him. I couldn't deny my feelings, even though I was like, really? I thought I was in control. I thought I was in control that that year I was going to stay single. I thought at least that year I was going to stay single, let alone never, you know, <laughs> not have it happen that soon. So totally when I least expected it, he had me go over the list. He tallied up the whole list. And you guys, he's. 55 out of 65 things I mean I had things on there because um from what he looked like how tall he was his hair color um to <laughs> if he had kids or not and I wrote down that he had kids um when he does it did and does and um, even wrote down that he doesn't like country music because I really don't like country music. It's my least favorite. Um, and so and he doesn't. So it was like very specific things that I'm so grateful to now, because if we were driving in the car and he was turning on the tunes and it was country music, it wouldn't flow as great. You know, it wouldn't be as happy a car ride for me. Right. So I say get clear don't like give it a time frame like it, the universe again will give it to you in just the right time when you even if you don't think you're ready for it and it will blow your mind in the process like that is <laughs> the magic of this life of this creation process i always say we're the co-creators and source is the ultimate creator but we've got to work mm -hmm. together right and our belief is everything. Our faith is everything. With all the mishaps and and trials and tribulations that I've gone through in my life, my and and survived, my faith muscle was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So mm -hmm. now I truly believe you can manifest anything. You can manifest famous people coming true. You can man in your life. You can manifest your dream partner in your life. Um, Actually, when I was 16 years old, I had two weddings in my head. I didn't know I was going to get married twice. I've had both of the weddings, guys. Like, it's like possible. And let me, I mean, two weddings, what does that mean? The fancy $20,000 wedding with the dress and the family. That was my first wedding. Second wedding to my now husband 
we had a skydiving wedding. I always thought it would be Ooh. so cool. Yeah, it's so cool to like say I do and then you jump out of a plane because it's like Ooh. doubly scary and like, yeah. So my husband and I did do that in 2012. Um, yeah, what a thrill. Never forget it. But yeah, so that is, you know, whatever you really, we all have this knowing inside of what we do really want. So even pulling out those dreams that you had as a child, I truly, truly believe that those are powerful um, because you really can't fake the funk, right? Like you really can't fake if you're unhappy in your current situation. It's going to be revealed because what the goal is to get into alignment with that of what you want and then watch your life just form and shape into those things. It's magical. All the blessings are really there for everybody. It's a a matter of like removing the blockages that are causing that it to not happen. I don't know if you see right up here, these are my diplomas and my certifications for hypnotherapy. I did end up going to hypnosis school. Never thought I was going to ever go back to school. I actually did make a board that um, I call an intuition board. It was just things that I just ended up like feeling called to put on a board. And um, one of these things says um, higher education. And when I was putting it on my board, I I was like, well, I'm not going back to school. What the heck? That's the controller in me, right? Saying, yeah, "Yeah, right. Like, what? am I doing this? And then four years later, I ended up going back to school. I'm like, wow, that is wild. And it's because again, our higher power totally has our back. Is there guiding us if we tune in and tap into really what it is and then, and then go for it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I love helping people remove the blockages. Um, I didn't know I was really studying like psychology and hypnotherapy since I was like 14 years old, I love this stuff. I just didn't see right before, you know, I needed to go through all of these experiences to then find myself really cultivating more of my purpose and why I'm here. So if you feel like you're lost right now, just baby step it one step in front of the other of finding out like what brings you joy and staying in I find that also gratitude is so huge into working with the universe, working with God, source. I say gratitude is God. I actually have it tattooed on me. That's the symbol (laughs) to remind me, like, that's how I get out of any, like, you know, weird negative feeling situation is uh, what am I grateful for? What is this life lesson teaching me? Um, I find that this is a school, right? Earth is a school that we all, this is just my belief that we all came here to at such a time as this, we all kind of chose to be here at this time and to learn these lessons. And if we don't learn the lesson, God is going to shape another situation to have us Mm -hmm. um, possibly learn that lesson. He wants us to learn that lesson so we can just level up and level up and level up. So yeah, we're here just to enjoy the journey. And um, yeah, so yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, this is, I mean, again, you you keep raising so many really important points. And I think I really want to emphasize um, this lesson that I think where you and I are on the same page. Um, you, you reminded me of like another story this time my own experience uh, when I was working with one of my other mentors yeah. who's also really into manifestation and so forth and he's actually a really um, uh, um, cool marketer also like he will market whatever he's doing in like these uh, really cool ways and he makes sometimes these claims about what he can deliver through this training or that training. And uh, he has this program where he's like, okay, if you have a goal, if you have a dream um, that you want to make happen, join this program and I'm going to teach you a process and um, it's going to happen for you. 
and uh, basically, he, um, and he does like the the process that he teaches is basically like uh, creating monthly visions, monthly visions for how you want to live your life. And he's like, yeah, if you follow my process, anything you put down that you want to make happen in this month, it will happen. And uh, if it doesn't happen, your money back. Money back guarantee. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so I was like, well, I've got to try this out. I was like really curious. And actually, you know, uh, so I was like, I'm going to write down all kinds of really crazy things (laughs) just to test the system and test his claims. And, you know, I had this plan and I was like, let's see what actually happens. But you know what happened is that he, he's like, okay, you have to go through my process. And, and if you don't follow my process, then I can't guarantee the results. So the process that he has you go through is actually, it's like you, can't be writing just random things you know you have to write down what you really really want to actually happen just like you were saying Brie yeah and so we really had to connect with our um you know with our heart space really and and then you're like you know what do I really really want and that list that came up um it was like so wildly different from what I'd been planning in my head to put down. Um, but then, you know, by the time that the, that list from my heart came up, I was like, wow, this is actually so much more meaningful. I really do really want this. And so wow. then I put down what I really wanted from my heart on the list. And then it did happen. That's awesome. So it's like... Uh, and this part about you know getting clear on what we really want is so I mean you think you want something like you think you want something but it's not like but it, it's not the same as what your heart wants and if there's a disconnect there then you know there's something you need to pay attention to in the context of that disconnect and um, it, and if you had to prioritize what you're going to focus on uh, manifesting, like is it the idea from your brain or the idea from your heart? I mean, my learning has been to prioritize the idea from my heart because I, in my experience, have found that is what leads to greater happiness for me. Uh, I don't know if you have a uh, any oh any for sure insight on this. Yeah, our heart is so powerful, um, and when we lead with our heart, we're leading with love. And I always look at like God is love, love is God, and so that's really where the truth is. If you're not loving something, <laughs> I, I don't. I've seen it countless times in my own life, and even in my husband's life. Um, if we're complaining about something, then we're not going to get blessings because it's the energy that we are putting out with it, right? I look at it this way. Being a mom, I, you know, and and I, I, <laughs> here's here's a wild story. When I was manifesting and getting clear on what I wanted in a husband, right? Um I was asking, I talked to my daughter and she was like seven years old at the time. And I asked her, I said, what do you want in a dad? You know, cause it's just been me and her. And she was like, I want him to have brown hair and brown eyes like me. And I'm like, okay. And, and have him be tall so he can pick me up and play and wrestle with me. I'm like, okay, what else do you want? And she said, I want a twin sister. I've always wanted a twin sister. I think that would be like the coolest thing. If you're a twin out there, you are blessed. And so I actually said to my daughter, okay, I didn't stifle it. I didn't say that would never happen. You're only you. I only had you. I was only carrying you in my body. Like I didn't, I just said, okay. And what's so interesting about that is just less than a year later, Um, My other stepdaughter was around my daughter, Kenzie's age. So Kenzie and Taylor, they're a year apart. 
And I would have never had this happen before because my daughter has a lot of friends. But when I was talking to Taylor on the phone, my my now stepdaughter, I couldn't tell if I was talking to Kenzie or Taylor. And that being a parent and like, you know, you know what your kid's doing. Like you have this feeling we have this connection to them. Right. But that just blew my mind. And they are the twins that she really wanted. So my daughter, my all my kids. They know that manifesting is real because they have gone through this, all this process with me. So even that, what was so amazing? Why, why am I sharing that? Like I, I learned a lot from that. Like I actually asked for a twin sister guys. I did when the world shut down, I had a really hard time. I just stopped doing in-person workshops. Um, I was just, I was just going through it because I still had more life to go and, and like, it was, you know, I had to stop the control right on that one for sure. Um, But I did ask for a twin sister. (laughs) This is wild. I wanted her to have red hair and glasses like me. And a year later, God blessed me with somebody who lives completely on the other side of the country. Um, and we would talk every day and she really helped guide me and and I learned from her and we're the best of friends we literally call each other twin sisters we're only we're 6 months to the day apart she's 6 months older than me like again i asked i asked during the lowest time of my life and um surrendered to the process and just mm-hmm. believed And it happened for me. So again, nothing is off the table. It could be the craziest thing, but if you believe it's, you're going to get it. You know, I've watched countless people in my life, my mom being one of them where um, everybody around her, she didn't let the noise get to her. She kept her belief. She wrote Mm -hmm. affirmations on mirrors. Um, She dived deep into you know more seminars and learning about herself and she (laughs) truly one of my heroes uh, because she turned her life around and became a multi-millionaire I mean like literally went and came from nothing and it was all because of her belief she didn't let any of the outside noise get to her and she just kept going and taking action on it and going and even when it was tough you know, like we, we're going to have tough moments. We're going to sometimes have these wall kicking moments where we think like, what else can I do? But really the magic is really into the letting go and the surrender to the process, Mm -hmm. surrender to source. And, um, so yeah, um, that was, I I guess that's what we were talking about, right? Following your heart. Like, what do you want? Yeah. That's what my daughter did. And then that's what I did even when it just seemed crazy and, you know, it all worked yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's such a brilliant example that you gave of your daughter wanting a twin sister, of you wanting a twin sister, because these are not thoughts. These are not desires that our logical mind would even accept. So, you know, you know that they're coming from your heart. And yeah. so it's like, uh, like, you know, sometimes I think that these these true desires, these these wants that our hearts have, it's almost like it's not even like we're coming up with them. It's like they're just being revealed to us. You know, like our heart is revealing to us that ah, this is what I desire and this is what I want. And in some ways, it already knows that these things are for us. They're meant for us. You know. Yeah. And so it's the desire is just that um, it's almost like that longing to reunite or to find what you know is meant for you. Yeah. So it's not okay. random at all that you have this desire and it's just ah, so, oh, wow. Just so beautiful to uh, like you don't um, yeah, like when I was thinking of my uh, mind list of oh this is what I would put down to come to in a month I was thinking of things like oh I'll, I'll put down I want a Ferrari, Ferrari? Sure, if I if yeah. I got a Ferrari in a month that would be fun 
<laughs> but is that really what I wanted from my heart? No. But it was just, you know, an idea that I had in my head because, you know, that's where I was in that moment where I was like, oh, I'm going to challenge the system and all of that. So it wasn't it wasn't a true, true desire. But, uh, yeah, so that's just such an important um, highlight that you have brought forth. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. It's funny yeah. about you say about the car thing. I had a white BMW on my vision board for a long time and a convertible an M6 mm -hmm. to get really specific. Well, one day my husband and I were at um, the jewelry store and I think we were like three years into um, our marriage and, and he ran into a friend who... <laughs> We just started talking. He ends up having a white convertible BMW M6. And I'd never seen one seen one ever. And I I mean, it was just so I guess I'm just sharing this because you never know when it's going to like pop up. Mm -hmm. And if it's not in, you know, if you don't have the car keys or the amount of money in your bank account to even go purchase something like that, like it will show up. And it was just so cool how like it was funny because my husband was standing next to us and he was like, yeah, but it's not white. And then his friend was like, yeah, it is. And I was just like, <laughs> like, I was like, Justin, my, to my husband, like, how did you not know? And he was like, I don't know. Like, again, he's not living my life, but that I had like, yeah, that was my dream car and da, 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 da. Yeah. So I ended up getting my actual dream car, by the way, it's in my garage right now, Alexis. But it's just interesting. I did like always want, and it's white. I always wanted a white, nice car, either BMW, Lexus, like which one. And like that even came at least expected moments as well. So I have so many stories. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And oh my gosh. Yeah. that um, That's such an interesting story because now you remind me of another lesson that I've been learning. And it's like sometimes I, I, I mean, Right now, I've been saying, oh, you know, mind thoughts, whatever, they're not necessarily your true desires. But sometimes, you know, thoughts do pop up in our minds, like, oh, I'll put down that I want a Ferrari. Um, and maybe it was, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, after your example, Gree, I'm like, huh, the fact that that thought popped into my mind to put down, I mean, it could have been anything, because I was just trying to come up with crazy ideas you know, and um, why did that pop up? So maybe it was like, it wasn't meant to be in the context of my heart's desire for that one month process, but maybe it's meant to manifest in my life at some other point. In time. Yeah. And that's why it popped up in my mind then, but just not for then, but for later. Exactly. And it could so, be a Lamborghini or something, right? And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is actually the car I really wanted. And yeah, it's just very, very cool how, again, all, everything is always working out for us. Indeed, indeed. Now yeah. that I have come to believe very deeply, that everything is working out for us. I mean, you know, I'm just, again, if you're telling stories. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, just a few months ago, one of my relatives passed away. Mm -hmm. And after he passed away, I found out, oh, he actually named me his trustee in his will. And um, I, I didn't, I honestly didn't know that he had done that. And anyway, now I'm responsible for taking care of all of these different things that are part of his trust and so forth and all these like he had a lot of real estate properties that were part of his trust. I never done anything in terms of managing real estate. So I've been learning lots of things among other things, you know, learning to manage because he, I mean, um, you know, there's, he, he has a huge income, but through the trust that I'm managing, but also has lots of expenses. And he did things his way, and I have to do things the way I can figure out how, right? And so when it comes to, like, now managing the, all the various expenses and bills, like, he had 
mm, sources of money coming to him from outside of uh, um, that, like he owned assets and things that are not part of the trust that I'm in charge of. And so he was able to um, uh, easily manage certain expenses that like I don't have access to that income from those assets that were not part of the trust. And so the, 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 the income I've been uh, dealing with that is available to me in the context of the trust like oh this is not enough to cover all the expenses that we are having and you know in this kind of a situation if I wasn't who I am now I could very easily have slipped into you know getting very stressed out and worried about money and where the bills are going to be paid and this and that but being who I am now and knowing and le- having learned what I have, uh, you know, I'm like, no, you know what? I'm I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to trust that what's happening. Uh, I mean, it's happening, and I'm going to find good in it. And yeah. it's going there's good going to come out of it, and things are going to resolve themselves for the good. So, you know, I've been consciously working on, like, every time even a little bit of stress starts to pop in my mind and I recognize it, you know, I practice letting go. And amazingly, you know, it's been over six months now I've been dealing with all of this. And it's amazing this, like, just two months ago, I got a check in the mail for $20,000 um, awesome. from one of the um, companies through which there's a loan on one of the properties in the trust. And this loan company is sending me a $20,000 check because they were like, oh, we uh, did our accounts for your account and turns out um, uh, when you took out the loan, you know, my, but that was my uncle who took out the loan that he had, you know, given, like, whatever money that he had given them, and they were like, oh, you gave us too much, or my uncle had. Mm-hmm. And so now they sent me a $20,000 check. And I was like, yeah, and this isn't just perfect time for me to be able to pay the taxes due yes. <laughs> on, these, uh, on this property and the other property that is part of the trust. And so the money just... I didn't know it was coming. I didn't know it was even possible for something like this to happen. It just showed up. And yeah. thankfully, just in time, you know, for me to be able to make the the the, uh, the tax payments on, on these properties. So it, it's like, whew. I mean, you know, like, don't, yeah. like, really, truly don't have to worry about anything. And, and, and. Uh, just focus more on you know cultivating the positivity and the gratitude yeah. and and working that um, belief and faith muscle as you were saying to you, that you know we're taken care of and yeah. everything will turn out for the best. Yeah, yeah. I would say like worrying is like a rocking chair. You think you're going somewhere and you're getting nowhere. Mm. Like it really mm. is all about just accepting what is, accepting that. Up, oh, you don't have all the money yet, but it, it's going to be okay because everything always works out. The universe has my back. Yeah. And then, wow, you know, you get this check in the mail and you're like, yep, it always works out. That's so awesome. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, this makes me think of a question. I've asked other guests also uh, this particular question because I think for a lot of our audience, um, this question comes up for them. So I'll ask you. So we have just been talking about manifesting and trusting and things will work out. Um, and this is truly what you and I have been experiencing in our lives. Um, but there are many people um, in our audience who may feel that this is not their reality, um, that yeah. things don't always work out, that you know, there's a lot of things that go wrong for them and and they have to deal with a lot of suffering and pain and trauma in their lives. Yeah. So what do you say to them 
about what's going on there and how they can respond to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I have been there. Um, again, I always say that God will never give us like more than we can handle because we're still alive. We're still breathing, right? We're still here playing this game of life. And I really, truly believe this is a game and um, it can be fun if you make it fun. And so even if it's just writing down three things that you're grateful for, that is huge. Um, if, if that's all it is, because it's hard to get out of bed because you can't stop crying, you know, just try to shift your state into something like a baby step like that and watch how, and recognize that, oh my gosh, like I'm feeling a little bit better. Right. And then playing on that, you don't have to know the big picture and whatever we focus on, I truly believe that's what we find. Um, now being a hypnotherapist too, I have seen incredible things in, when I'm under hypnosis. That's really why I, I wanted to teach hypnosis and, and be a, a hypnotherapist. Um, and you guys, I actually, in my mind's eye, saw my cat. She wasn't even born yet. And I'm not even a cat person. And it was so wild. And so I didn't know it at the time that that's what I saw and what was, but the, like, you know, everything conspired where as a kitten, and this was in, this was only in um, 2020 while I was still in school. Um, so I was already in school, right? She scurried across the floor in my kitchen and I gasped. It was right then I knew, oh my gosh, eight, nine months prior, that was my first hypnosis session because I didn't even know this world. And that is what I saw. And so I realized in that moment how powerful we all have these like metaphysical, like psychic ability. Like I, I didn't, I mean, I went there in my head. It was revealed to me in my hypnosis session. And even what I was going to call her, I call her Punky. That's what she said her name was in the hypnosis session. I just was like, oh my gosh, this is wild. So I guess what I'm, but I just had to share that story because like, even if you don't know at the time, mm -hmm. it's going to be revealed later for, and hopefully that gives you a little hope um, out of the stuff. Like I understand there is, I, I, I understand there is a lot of suffering that's going on in this world. There is mm -hmm. people in high places, higher power that we've got to be weary of. And we have to really kind of be mindful at what we're being fed. I don't watch the news at all because it's like just so negative And I really protect my boundaries, you know, my space of like, what's going to be let in. There was a time in my life before the, you know, shutdown of the world where I was, I couldn't get out of bed. I was depressed. I was still manifesting guys. I was married to my husband. Like all these things were still occurring, but I, I needed to grow through all of that. Mm -hmm. Like we really will never appreciate the light if we haven't been in the dark. We live in a dualistic world. It's just how it is. If everything was daisies and roses all the time, we wouldn't even know that it was daisies and roses all the time, you know? So I guess that's just what I'm saying is like making the best of the situation at hand, even when it feels like, look, if you just lost somebody yesterday, honor the grief be in it. It's okay. This is the process, you know, um, all of like our childhood traumatic events have shaped us into who we are. It's really up to us, you know, to go and heal that inner child. I really believe in major shadow work I've been doing for the past couple of years too, like really deep diving and honoring that little girl, talking to that little girl, mm. um, telling her everything's going to be okay. Consciously doing that, um, can really shift anybody's situation, you know, but honor yourself. It is so okay to, to miss someone, to be in that grief, to, um, 
gosh, even be mad at God. Like, I think that's a process. I have done that. I've been there. Um, now I've like just educated myself and and I've realized God is my back, you know, God is love, but that it wasn't always like that. And so I guess that is like really what, yeah, just in, enjoy where you can and realize that it's going to all work out for you, even if it doesn't look like it right now. So, yeah. 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 Thank you for that, Brie. And You're welcome. I lost track of time. <laughs> so, I did want to uh, share this. This is just yes, one of okay. the boards that I made recently. Um, I'm not yeah. even going to like, I just wanted to show a picture of it. I put yeah. it in frames. You can get a frame at like oh. your local Walmart, Walmart or whatever. Um, but some things on my vision boards just keep me in the game too. Um, yeah. If anybody, if you guys are planning on making a vision board, here's a little secret. And I have more secrets found on my website at brierees.com. Brie like the cheese, Reese like the chocolate. Um, so check out my stuff. All my social media stuff is on there. I actually, you can find me on social media anywhere under vision boards work. Um, but one of the secrets that I do want to give you is if you can put on your vision board something that has already come true in your life, it is really helpful. It's helpful because when you do look at your board and the things that have yet to come true, you will be reminded that it will come true. So that's just one of my secrets that I, I love to teach on. Um, and so it's not really a secret, just one of my tools in my tool belt, um, how to make a vision board. I do have a free eight step process, like on what type of glue that I use and what really my system is on when you are ready to create it. Uh, but just know that a vision board can look like any vision that you have inside of your mind, your belief system. Um, scribing, you can write things down, write it like a story, because this is the story. You are creating your story in this life, and it's beautiful. It's going to turn out amazing. Um, you know, I really want everybody to play out the songs and the melodies that are in their deepest heart's desires, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the the cemeteries are paved in regret with people that actually like died with the music still inside of them. And I know that I am here to help people not have that be the case. I really want them to really play out full out. It's a play. It's a fun play. And you're the star of the show, <laughs> your own show. So, uh, yeah. Yes. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Brie. And yes, to all of our audience, please make sure you check the show notes because we'll drop all the links that Brie mentioned to her website, to her social media in our show notes. You can easily connect with her and get more help and support with creating your own vision boards whenever you're ready for it. Yeah. So until we connect next time, I just wish you luck and luck. Of peace and joy.